morning. Welcome to Coffee Walk. I've already had one, so I'm just going to refresh this one. I've had this question asked often. What is the most up-and-coming new collectible Jeep? As you know, we've been here for 35 years working on 76 to 86 CJ5, 7s, and 8s, which now, in my opinion, are all collectible. The 87 to 95 YJ Wranglers are in a class of their own with its own following, and the aftermarket is finally picking up, and there's a lot of parts in reproduction for those now. And there are some neat YJ Wranglers out there. But what has really come around in the last two years is 97 to 06 TJ Wranglers. Low mileage stuff, each year had special colors, special options. But today, I'm gonna to say it, I'm gonna show you the holy grail of the TJ line. So these Jeeps are commonly referred to as an LJ. They're not an LJ, they're a TJ Unlimited. On the assembly line, these body tags had an L and a J on the tag. Even though it was a TJ Unlimited, people started calling them LJs as in long Jeep. In January of 2004, Jeep came out in their marketing division and said, hey, we're coming out with a stretched TJ, which is gonna be called the Unlimited. These are basically 15 inches longer. So these came out in mid-2004 and production ended in 2006. There are roughly 47,000 of them built. Now, the reason these are holy grail is they're the ultimate Jeep to modify, and let me tell you why. And there's still some guys, even to today, believe the LJ is the best platform to modify the four-wheel, even over and above a JK and a JL. The wheelbase, which is from the center of the wheel to the center of the wheel back here, is 10 inches longer than the TJ. 10 inches, it's a big deal. And in the back of the Jeep, as far as cargo space, back here, you gained 13 inches. And in the rear seat, which if you've ever sat in the back of a TJ, you gained two inches. So why is that important? We're gonna look at this Jeep right here. This has got a lift kit and 35 inch tires, which is a very common modification done on TJs. When you do that on a TJ, and you're sitting a tall hill, you're adding a lot of weight to the back, and it's very often they would come up in the air. The LJ is a longer wheelbase. It's a much better vehicle to ascend or descend hills, but it also rides much better on the roads. So there's many, many reasons why. I could talk for an hour on why an LJ is far superior to a TJ. Another thing is with the extended wheelbase, it's 10 inches longer, the towing capacity went up by 1,000 pounds from 2,500 to 3,500. Now, why are these so collectible? Well, I just told you they're rare. And number two, this is the most heavily modified Jeep ever built. In our shop, we've looked at our service tickets over the last, say, 10 years. Almost 70% of the LJs that come in here, 70 in our shop are modified. Now, this is a base LJ. This is a 2006, and again, they started in 2004 and a half. The only options on this Jeep are, is it's got a leather wrapped steering wheel. It's an automatic. And it has what's called the smoker's package, so you can, you can plug in a radar detector or whatever. No, this one hasn't been smoked in. So this Jeep was $26,125. Now, if you got one without the smoker's package and without the leather steering wheel and a six-speed, you were looking at about $24,000. That was an expensive Jeep. Now, the Rubicon is the one to have. And this one's got some very rare options. The reason we've got the flares off is we take them off to buff and wax the Jeep. And they've got some nicks on them, which we'll repair. These are the Mopar Jeep factory rock crawler bumpers. Worn 9,500 pound winch. You very rarely ever, ever see that on an LJ. Factory hard top, expensive option. Automatic. Again, a factory rock crawler rear Jeep bumper. You can see it says Jeep right here. Jeep tow setup. Now, when you went up to the Rubicon edition, the base LJ, which is over there, another neat thing about the LJ is they all have Dana 44s in the back and they're all four wheel disc brakes. What a huge upgrade, even for a base Jeep. That LJ over there, which is the base LJ, has 373 gears but it's got a 35 in the front. When you go to a Rubicon, you get 410 gears. You also obviously get the four-wheel disc brakes, but you get electric lockers front and rear, and the front dip is also a 44. Incredible. You also got a four-to-one rock-ready transfer case in this, which is an incredibly strong transfer case. Gives you a very slow crawl ratio. And from the factory, you've got lockers front and rear, which means, and they're electric, you flip the switch, and you've got positive traction in front and rear. These things are just a beast off-road. Why is this one so special? Why am I showing it to you? 
This is probably the most expensive Rubicon LJ we've ever seen in our shop, even more expensive than a Sahara edition. In 2005, they made a khaki colored Rubicon Sahara, which was a more expensive trim package. And that was for the movie Sahara. They made about a thousand of them. But this Jeep with all the options that I just listed off, automatic, hard top, rock crawler bumpers, 9,500 pound winch, which is how this thing was ordered from the factory, was almost $40,000. So there you have it. In my opinion, what the most collectible Jeeps are on the market right now are the 97 to 06, and the holy grail of them is gonna be the last year of the Wrangler Unlimited, known as the LJ. Let's see what's going on in our CJ stuff. This is our color code 1D Autumn Gold. You know, this is the one we started frame up, powder coated. We're building this as custom for spec, four inch lift kit, Bilstein shocks, stainless steel brake lines, Corvette LS motor with all polished drives, power brakes, power steering, a brand new AC in it. This body was completely torn all the way down, full show quality paint. And since it is a Laredo, in 1981, the seats were nutmeg with the stripes inside. The top, hard top will be color matched to these inlays on the doors. This is a very rare automatic. So this Jeep's really coming along well. And let's go in the back and see how our CJ5 1D Autumn Gold's going. Another thing to hit on these LJs real quick. Generally, a vehicle's gotta be 25 years old to be considered a collectible or an antique. Some of the insurance companies, including Haggerty, have already seen that these LJs are collectible. You can get a green value policy on them. That's how rare they are. And being as though these things are only 14 years old, that's pretty amazing that you already have a Holy Grail collectible Jeep. I love them. One other thing I keep forgetting today. You know when a Jeep has become a collectible Jeep when it gets back and it's selling at its original MSRP. If you find a low mileage LJ like the first one I show you, that base Jeep, that's got 12,000 miles on it. We've got it priced right at what the original cost of it was, which was 26,125 plus like 660 for freight. So, and it is as close to new as you're probably going to find. Now, you guys that are absolute aficionados out here, that Jeep is exactly correct as it left the factory except for the bumper end caps. They had the angled ones off. They looked funny. Previous owner didn't like it, so he changed them to the earlier style. So here's our 1D Autumn Gold CJ5. This is not a body off restoration, rather a full cosmetic restoration. One of the neat things he's doing is on the inside it's getting spray lined. For many, many years, everybody wanted them done in black. Well, he's having a color key to the same colors as the Jeep, so the spray liner will be tinted. We've got neutral spray liner to the same color as the Jeep. I'm actually gonna walk back over to show you that on the uh, CJ7 as well, because that customer chose to do that also. So this has come along really, really nice. The front end was off, unfortunately it's taped, but the firewall's been done. The cut ends on the grill, fender's hood, like I normally show you. So let's go over there and see what a color keyed spray liner looks like. And we actually, oddly enough, did three of them last week. We had a red CJ7 in as well. Like I said, in the past, everybody usually spray lined them if they wanted it spray lined in black. So this is color keyed to the Jeep, it really looks neat. So there you have it, a Holy Grail Jeep, which I rarely say, there are a lot of Holy Grail CJ7s. There are some Holy Grail YJs, or some Holy Grail TJs, but the true current Holy Grail Jeep right now is the TJ Unlimited, better known as an LJ. We currently have three 2006s, great examples on cbjeep.com. Please like, tag, share, follow. Y'all have a great weekend.